So hello everybody, my name is uh, Anwen Hao and I will be uh, presenting on uh, this research project, which is the most, uh, uh, is the United States in decline? And this question is my research question in its most uh, simplified form. Um, so before we begin, uh, here is a brief outline of what we'll be talking about today. I'll first talk about why I chose to do this project um, and then the uh, takeaways that I got from uh, this project. Um, so I decided to investigate this question uh, around towards the end of uh, the year 2020. And during that time, uh, I began to notice uh, as someone living in the United, United States, a lot of stresses that uh, the United States seemed to be experiencing. COVID-19, uh, like, COVID-19 seemed like a healthcare crisis, January 6th, a uh, political crisis, a recession, an economic crisis. So with all of these crises, I wanted to investigate whether these, uh, these, these factors, these, uh, uh, these stresses are truly indicative of something, uh, of, of something like more significant about the United States trajectory as a country. Are they just hiccups in uh, the United States uh, general uh, uh, evolution towards progress, or are they um, are they just uh, are, uh, do they mean something more significant? And uh, I decided. Uh, I think uh, when I first began this, I uh, I I I believe that uh, using history would be a very helpful way for me to investigate this question because. Um, looking to the history, I wanted to understand history provides a lot of lessons for us and, and through uh, looking at past case studies of when countries have declined, um, I hope to apply those lessons to the present. Now, going into my research question in more detail, um, uh, is the United States in decline? I've used for the concept of decline is uh, can be a little bit vague at first, but I'm using uh, historian Jared Diamond's definition of decline here, um, and he proposed a drastic decrease in human population, uh, human population size and or political, economic, social complexity over a considerable area for an extended time. So uh, for the purposes of my project, I found this definition to be rel relatively useful and uh, workable. So um, when I I initially wanted to pick a couple uh, of countries to investigate their histories and uh, see how they've how they declined, but uh, as my project went on, I I realized that um, th uh, this this question is uh, a little bit too large for me to tackle, and um, and so I decided to uh, pick a couple of uh, a couple of books, a couple of theories. That other historians have proposed um, as to why uh, societies fail, why societies decline. And uh, the three books I chose are Why Nations Fail, um, Collapse, and How Civil Wars Start. And these, each of these books cover the idea, this idea of civilizational decline um, from different perspectives. And I'll go into I'll go into each of these in uh, more detail. So we can start with uh, Why Nations Fail by Darren Asen Lobu and James A. Robinson. So the main theory, the main idea behind their uh, theory uh, is that a uh, civilizational decline is predominantly a function of their institutions. And uh, they're basically, uh, this book covers decline from a, a political and economic perspective. Um, and, the, and the crux of their argument is that um, there's a distinction between inclusive and uh, inclusive and extractive institutions. And inclusive institutions are those that distribute power widely, um, uh, and they provide incentives to innovate and invest. So uh, inclusive institutions might mean democracy. Um, power is distributed among, among the people and a, uh, a free market system where uh, and, and the people have people uh, have uh, an incentive to, they, they have a reward for innovating and creating great ideas. 
Um, and in contrast, extractive institutions are where power is uh, concentrated in a small group. Um, authoritarian regimes exhibit this. And the government's primary goal is not to uh, encourage innovation, but instead to extract wealth from the population. Um, so even if, uh, even if in, in these in these uh, cases, there's even even if the rich, uh, even if the uh, uh, socially higher up are very rich, the bottom are usually very poor and cannot uh, meet their basic needs. And uh, these two these two authors argue that uh, inclusive institutions are ones that tend to prosper because uh, the incentive to invest and to innovate uh, spurs the, the economy and uh, uh, drives the country to uh, prosperity. Now, an alternate perspective um, is proposed by uh, Jared Diamond in his book, Collapse. Um, he covers the idea of decline from a very environmental perspective. Um, he argues that the primary, the primary cause of civilizational decline is how uh, how we handle the environment, how we deal with nature around us. Um, and some of these, uh, he acknowledges that um, things like, uh, in his argument, he proposes the five point framework. Uh, and uh, some of the things he he acknowledges is uh, not uh, is beyond humanity's control. For example, changes in climate. But there are other things that uh, we can control: man-made environmental damage, conflicts with enemies, um, and and uh, probably most important, how we respond to these natural problems. So very different from uh, 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 the previous the previous theory. And then finally, um, how civil wars start by Barbara F. Walter. She covers. Uh, she covers. Um, she mostly focuses on civil wars, um, and as uh, implied by the title, um, and internal political violence. Um, and uh, I, I sort of used uh, uh, internal political division as also as a function of uh, civilizational decline, and. Uh, she has uh, she proposes many reasons, a combination of these four reasons that cause uh, internal political division. Um, and uh, the most uh, she argued that the most um, dangerous dangerous one is the transition from democracy to autocracy. and she uh, she calls this anocracies, uh, where there's uh, where different groups of people are vying for power, and so that creates uh, internal split. And this, uh, uh, again, this covers the idea of decline from a different perspective, different from uh, uh, a more political perspective rather than uh, an economic perspective like the first theory that we saw and the environmental perspective by uh, Jared Diamond. Um, so after looking through all of these, uh, all of these theories, um, I uh, wanted to synthesize them into a more a more comprehensive account, uh, a more comprehensive uh, response to my initial research research question. Now it's easy to think of these theories as uh, uh, opposing each other. Uh, we might think that uh, Jared Diamond is uh, Jared Diamond's uh, uh, Jared Diamond's theory is completely in opposition to theories like. Uh, why the, the economic theory proposed in why nations fail. But uh, it's more helpful to think about them in as a sort of complementary sense. They cover gaps uh, to get, they cover gaps that uh, the other theories uh, have and with, and by synthesizing together, um, it, cre it creates a more comprehensive answer. And uh, well, let's return to our original research question. Is the United States in decline? It certainly has, it has met many of the factors that we saw: um, wealth gap, inequality, uh, environmental uh, reliance, fossil fuels. There's a spike in political violence, and yet I want to clarify that the, these factors are not can are, are not fit. Um, certainly, they can cause their cause for worry, but they are not a cause for um, for uh, like giving up, right? Um, only, only by um, having a reasonable amount, amounts of worry and 
still have that hope for a better future? Um, can we uh, create, can we uh, truly address the problems that we face? And that is it for my presentation. Um, thank you very much for listening. Very interesting. Thank you, Anwen. Um, as a reminder for folks, you can ask questions in the chat. Um, curious from your perspective, it sounds like you there, there are signs that the U.S. might be in decline. You're not saying definitively yes. Are there things that your research uncovered that um, should happen in order to reverse that, or were there was there anything in the um, in the theories around what nations do to reverse decline? Um, Does that make uh, sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess I'll just. Uh, give one example for uh, why nations fail. So in that book, uh, they, they said that certainly institutions are uh, tend to persist over time, but for uh, for the for for power to shift to the people, it takes um, it takes sort of like a uh, I, I want to say a revolution, but like a, a sort of uprising from uh, the uh, from the bottom classes to the top. So it cannot be uh, only by only through that way can a power actually shift from the top to the bottom. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, there is an additional question around next steps for your research, which I'll let you answer um, in writing in the uh, chat. Um, but thank you so much, Owen.